territory and leaves her marks. It's her area and that of the lioness. Guided by the scent, Mandler examines all the tracks when she's not bothered by Tamu. The lioness is keener to play than to look for prey. That's bound to get on Mandler's nerves. To avoid detection, Mandler impregnates herself with the smell of herbivores, thus masking her own acrid predator's scent. Tamu, the sweet one, leaves her friend to track down prey in her place. This suits the naturally curious Mandler, who likes to explore new territories on her own. The many scents she detects on the ground arouse her hunter's instinct. These antelopes are aware of the danger. Without the advantage of surprise, Mandla has no chance of catching one. The wildebeest look appetizing, but when they charge, they can trample any adventurous predator. Impalas are easy to catch, provided Mandler can get within 20 meters of them. A leopard has powerful muscles, but soon runs out of breath. There is prey in abundance, but few opportunities for a kill. Driven by hunger, Tamu the lioness has a preference for buffalo, but they present a number of disadvantages. They're large, there's a lot of them, and they're dangerous. The baby which is suckling is an ideal prey. But the guards are watchful and form a protective circle. In an open plain where all confrontations are possible, surprise is no longer an option. You have to impress your adversary which will reveal its weak points as it flees. Mandla arrives at the wrong moment and interrupts the stalking. And this distracts the lioness. drives Tamu to break off the game. Her clumsiness throws the herd into a panic. dreaming of amazing chases and races, of easy and plentiful hunting. Failure leaves her out of breath.
The arrival of the storks heralds the beginning of winter in the southern hemisphere, a period favorable for hunting since the bush is at its driest. A predator sees its prey more easily when the vegetation is sparse. Mandler has slept all night in her refuge, and hunger is beginning to gnaw at her. She heads towards the few water holes where the animals congregate. But these water holes also attract elephants. They have a feeling of repulsion towards the big cats that goes back thousands of years. for her prey by threading her way between the elephant's colossal silhouettes. Since there are no antelope in sight, this rabbit could appease her hunger for a day. In a savannah stripped bare and haunted by elephants, Mandela finds it hard to find a quiet, sheltered spot to eat. and the female leopard don't sleep together, but not a single morning goes by without the two cats engaging in a playful ritual in which the simulated fights end up in caresses. The need for physical contact is intense. They give each other all the affection that their mother was unable to give them. For the time being, their friendship seems indestructible and is standing up to the challenges of the bush. A bush full of curious onlookers with no notion of privacy. Rhinos and big cats discover each other. Each sounds out the other and looks for their weak points. proves too threatening a playmate. Best to keep the games among the felines.
big cat's acrobatics bother the mother rhino. It's usually Mandela who starts to play, but when she's getting ready to go off to hunt, the lioness approaches her with playful intentions. She never picks the right moment. Mandela has noticed her favorite meal, warthogs. Huntress scouts the dens and creates panic among the warthogs. Tamu, on the other hand, like any lioness, acts as if she was hunting with a pride of lions. She was lying in ambush and now takes advantage of Mandler's beating work. Tamu gets out of breath quickly and has no endurance, as yet she has no experience of lying in wait and using surprise. As for Mandla, she suppresses her impatience. But her quivering tail betrays her excitement. Her shoulders low, she slips in between the thickets to get closer to her prey. At a distance of more than 20 meters, she has no chance. The warthog is a long distance runner. The leopard has to count on surprise, cunning and speed. They weigh the same, 60 kilos of fatty flesh versus 60 kilos of muscle. Still with her clan hunting instinct, Tamu lies in wait, ready to block the warthog's getaway. Mandla is too small and is scared of being trampled. She has to abandon her prey. This is the moment the lioness has been waiting for. It's the end of the misunderstanding about their method of hunting. The lioness is larger and more reckless. For her, sharing is out of the question, and every leopard knows that. She still has to be able to defend her prey from the elephants, the kings of the savannah. Elephants are wary of the big cats, since they represent a threat for their babies and a challenge to their power. off with her prize. She won't be able to digest all that meat in one day. We can only imagine what Mandela feels at this point. Disappointment, frustration, betrayal. It's the first scratch on their friendship. Mandela finds half of her kill, abandoned by her friend. This evening, no one will disrupt her meal. A 
month has passed and a male leopard has scented Mandler's presence. The fertile female scent tantalizes him. scratches the ground and impregnates his cheeks with Mandler's urine. Night and day, he follows her tracks. Step by step, he smells her scent. After tree, he leaves his marks on the scratch marks left by Mandler, and also leaves her some unambiguous messages as to his intentions. The female's marks are more and more recent. He's getting closer to her. In Savannah, every first encounter is played out in fear and involves fangs, claws, and growling. Little by little, the male shows that he is the dominant one. His strength is such that he even dislodges some rocks. Landler tries to appease the male. She flattens her body, hangs her head, and opens her mouth in a snarl to show her submission. Once it's been established which of the two is dominant and which is submissive, the mating ritual begins. Mandler uses all her seduction skills, but the male remains impassive. The male checks once again that she's on heat and impregnates himself with her scent. is over, Mandela plays the charmer until her partner gives in. The mating lasts barely three seconds. for her, Tamu is forced to flush out her prey herself. Solitude is teaching her technique. Hunting is giving her endurance. In Africa, they say that where vultures can be seen circling in the sky, there is always an animal that is enjoying its meal and another that is suffering.
After weeks of intensive mating, the exhausted partners separate. Each will return to its life as a loner. If Mandla has offspring, her relationship with Tamu the lioness will become impossible. The baby leopards would be devoured by her former friend. The big cat's affectionate games, cemented by their friendship from the very earliest age, prevail over solitude and the resentment over sullen prey. But the spirit and happy-go-lucky attitudes of youth have disappeared. The two friends tire more quickly. Mandla prepares for the hunt on her own by getting rid of her scent and that of the lioness. She's following a trail. difficult since the monkeys often change trees and there are so many of them that Mangla is unable to concentrate on just one. Mangla targets the weakest looking monkey. tree where she can leave her prey, safe from any predator. The savannah magnifies every action and every sound. This causes unexpected reactions from other animals. The elephants are attracted by the commotion. A rhinoceros reminds the elephants that they are entering its territory. <coughs> Rhinos and elephants are also eternal rivals. They quarrel easily over territory or power. in the bark of the tree and its fresh roots. And to get at the roots, they have to knock down the tree. So much the better if that upsets the leopard. Mandla moves to another branch, but loses her nerve. When she panics, she becomes clumsy and could drop her prey.
She is determined not to let the elephant trample on her prize and becomes bolder. Finally, the elephant gives up. The tree is too tough. That night, still stressed by her adventure, Mandla barely takes a bite of her meal. The savanna is cruel. The fight for survival does not allow friendships to stand the test of time. It's early morning and Mandla has changed trees. Tamu joins her friend, but when prey is involved, is friendship still valid? Mandla is again in danger of letting go of her prey. They both bear their fangs, but this time to intimidate and bite. Mandla sees her meal disappear and her affection for the lioness dissolve. Tamu has just sealed the end of their friendship. We can only imagine Mandla's disappointment and her sadness at this betrayal. She thought they were friends, but in fact they were rivals. The savanna has reasserted itself. The story has come to an end, but lions will always be a part of Mandla's life. The best is over, the worst is yet to come. The year has passed and Tamu has turned into a fine, robust female weighing 200 kilos. At last she has reached sexual maturity. Now age three, she is on heat. A male is courting her. He impregnates himself with her scent. He sniffs, grimacing as he does so. Tamu titillates him, arousing his senses. They mate at a less sustained rate than the leopards every quarter of an hour for 48 hours only. It's an unchanging ritual with no surprises. Only Tamu varies her behavior. The way she rolls around on the ground testifies to the intensity of her pleasure. This male has chosen her for a long time. It's the only chance of survival for this solitary lioness. cause for concern. The lions are coming to hunt on her territory more and more often. To add to her distress, she still has no young. She has found her male again, and like the first time they met, she puts all her energy into encouraging him to mate.
Hitler senses that the male is going about it the wrong way. He rubs against her, but does not penetrate her, and that irritates her. However, she obstinately continues her amorous display in the hope of being impregnated. of lions disrupt the intimacy of the pair. The roars come from Tamu and her male. They are announcing their presence, as they do every evening. Intruders beware. does the honors without needing to be led on anymore. The mating is slightly noisier and longer than in the case of leopards. Ten seconds. Unlike the female leopard, Tamu only needed 48 hours with her mate to produce two healthy cubs. She was lucky. As a solitary female, no lioness would have accepted her in her pride. She offers her young what she had recreated with the female leopard, the affection and security of a family. The one who has access to Tamu's teats more often is already dominating. He asserts himself and initiates the games. <laughs> Mandler lives in the same territory as the lioness Tamu but does not associate with her anymore. She has still not become pregnant, although her partner often comes to see her. advantage of Mandler's hunting. He has settled in and is becoming lazy. Mandler is not a female to give up that easily. Still on heat, she uses her talents to awaken the senses of the male, who is tired of her advances.
Will she at last give birth in three and a half months' time? A few weeks later, a large pride of lions bursts onto Mandla's and Tamu's territory. They threaten to empty the savanna of all its prey. The marauders and Mandler have spotted the same small antelope. Thanks to her experience with the lioness Tamu, Mandla has learned to fear them. She will be extra cautious in order to hunt the antelope in spite of these unfamiliar lions. The opportunity is too good to miss. The prey is nearby. It's worth the risk. She has to act fast before the noise attracts the marauders. getting nervous. Will she drop her prey yet again? on a branch. It's the signal for the attack. A lioness manages to seize the spoils and the other lions challenge her for it. The antelope passes from one to the other and is finally torn to pieces. Nature has reasserted itself. War between the lion and the leopard is never ending. The friendship between Mandla and Tamu was an interlude, an exception imposed upon nature by the benevolent intervention of man. What has become of Mandla and Tambu? A few months later, the car's headlights surreptitiously pick out the image of Tamu. She has a new litter. She still has her nonchalant character, but keeps a watchful eye on her young. Her male is with her. 
One day she might become the matriarch of an impressive pride. season, the burnt savanna has become alive with color again. Mandla reappears. Her friendship with the lioness is a thing of the past. The present is her victory. Yesterday, she was sharing her affections with the lioness. Today, she is giving affection to her young. Her male left as soon as he'd made her pregnant, as is the way with leopards. Now, with her young ones around her, Mandla has become a leopard like any other. One year from now, when her offspring had reached maturity, she will become solitary and secretive, as the law of the savannah demands. Yeah. 